para triathlete for Great Britain, as a world champion and Paralympic triathlete, I wanted to tell the world some of the stories behind the people and the personalities I have met throughout my nine years in the sport. With the Paralympic Games around the corner, now seems the perfect time to get to know some of the para triathletes who will be going for gold in Tokyo. And I have fellow racing buddy, actually, Grace Norman. She is also a PT5 athlete. Grace was born without a left foot, but as part of a sporty family, was soon keeping up with her siblings before properly getting into running in high school thanks to her first prosthetic. A triathlete since the age of 15, and at Rio 2016, she won the first para triathlon gold medal and became world champion that same year, defending the title in 2017. My first kind of question is, um, you were born obviously with a congenital constriction band syndrome. Uh, could you explain a little bit more about that to viewers that perhaps don't know what it is or what your disability is? And I guess how you got into sport and, and how you, you grew up with the disability that you have? Yeah, so um, I was born without my left foot. Um, so I'm a below the knee amputee. Um, I was born with a condition called um, amniotic band syndrome. So that's basically whenever part of the amniotic sac gets around a limb and cuts off circulation in the womb. Um, and then I was born without it. Um, it was a bit of a shock to my family. Um, they didn't know, they couldn't see it on any of the ultrasounds or scans before I was born. Um, so it was a bit of a shock, but um, I was born into a very athletic family. Um, my parents were both athletes and I have um, two sisters who are athletes as well. And so it was just kind of a, a normal thing for us. Like, all right, my older sister is running. So Grace, you need to run too. And, um, and nothing ever stopped me. I um, started off uh, playing t-ball and soccer and just um, really any sports that my older sister was doing, my family was involved in. Um, I got into running when I was in sixth grade, so a very young age. Um, but I didn't really get into running well with like an athletic prosthetic until I was in high school. Um, so that really turned around whenever I met some other para-athletes who were using um, athletic prosthetics like the cheetah blade. And um, whenever I received that first, it was just a phenomenal change. Um, went from running very slow with like a very bad hitch in my hip and then to running just so smooth. I mean, I still have an interesting gait, but smooth for me. Um, yeah. And it just turned athletics around for me. And I got into triathlon when I was about 15 years old. Um, my dad had started triathlon and I thought it was a really cool, um, I putting the three sports together. I, I grew up running and then I swam in high school. And, and so I was like, Oh, I can add biking. Um, and so being able to do that with my dad and with uh, my family was just really an awesome experience and a great introduction to triathlon. No, no, that's amazing. I, I'm similar. I, I love cycling with family and everything like that. It's, it's amazing. I'm not entirely sure that my family enjoyed when I was at home in a lockdown because I was like, right, <laughs> today is cycling, today is running, we're going swimming. And they were like, oh. <laughs> yeah. family's a great influence. Um, so yeah. what, what point um, did the Paralympic dream become real for you? I mean, I sort of fell into the world of, of Paralympics. Um, you know, it was never a dream as a youngster. I didn't really know about disability sport. Was was there a moment where you realized, you know, I'm gonna go to a Paralympics, I wanna target this, I wanna work hard? Yeah, so um, kind of like you growing up, I didn't really know there were other people with like, a, not disabilities, but you know, missing limbs. I. I grew up in um, a pretty small town. There wasn't anyone like me around. I didn't really know um, about social media. I wasn't connected to that community. And so I just competed in able-bodied sports um, all throughout middle school and high school. And then um, it was, I think like, a, I think I was about 13 years old. I went to the Paralympic trials just to watch. Um, they were being held in Indianapolis, Indiana for track and field. And um, I saw all these athletes and I was like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. There's so many people like me. Um, and I was able to talk to some of the athletes and, and they were like, why aren't you, why aren't you competing? Like we need more female athletes. We need more people like to represent our country. And um, like I'd always been athletic as a kid and 
like I'd been grew up watching the Olympics and um, the first time I ever heard of the Paralympics, I was like, I want to go. That's, that's incredible. That's for people like, like me, like I really want to go there. Um, and so then I started after that um, Paralympic trials watching experience, I just um, was just looking, I was like, how do I get into this? Like, there's so many people that I can train with. And, and then I fell into triathlon um, and track and field and both. And it was just an incredible, just seeing that dream kind of come true, but it didn't really like hit me until probably a year or two before the Rio Paralympic games that I was actually seeing my dream come true and saying, wow, I'm actually going to go like, this is going to be so amazing. So that was just a really fun journey to see that kind of dreams to be to reality. Definitely. And I, I actually remember, um, 2014 Edmonton, I had just taken my first world title and I think you'd come in fourth. And that was the first time that I can remember racing you. Yeah. I said, I turned around and I said to my parents, Grace will be my next challenger. And they were like, no, no, no. And then, I, and then like come a few years later, <laughs> you were like it, and it was great to, I guess, see you develop, um, not that I'm old, but um, having been <laughs> a little bit longer in the Paralympic world, it was yeah, great to yeah. get momentum and get stronger with each year. Um, so no, that's definitely, um, it's motivating, I think, for, for senior athletes. And I'm sure you can see now when you look at um, talent that's younger than yourself and you think, you know what, they've got something special. And I think yeah, that's of course. How the Paralympics is now that it's becoming bigger and it's getting more momentum, we're finding that people with disabilities are sort of getting, I guess, confidence to come forward and race. And I think it's, you know, it's amazing. And the world of triathlon, you know, I came from swimming beforehand. I've seen some amazing feats in the world of triathlon. Uh, we had Europeans a few years ago. There was a quadruple amputee um, missing oh. both legs below the knee and both of his arms. He rode a normal bike like me and you. And wow. I was just like, do you know what? People need to see this. People need to know what we're about because yes. as this is titled, we go beyond what, what we're supposed to. So I guess mm. the next thing that I think would be quite interesting for people to know, obviously you mentioned you had a prosthesis and then obviously, was it a cheetah blade that you said? What adaptions do you have to make to any equipment that you've got? And also, I guess, do you have to train like a little bit different in certain things? Like I know that obviously when I'm, when I'm training, there's certain things I can't do. So my coach has to think outside the box and, you know, we have to try and make it up as we go. What is it that you have to do differently that somebody might not realize? Yeah. So I have, um, six different prosthetics that I use with, uh, throughout, I guess, a, a, a week in my life. Um, I have a few different ones for running, uh, depending on the distance and how fast I'm going. Um, each blade works differently for the speed, um, and helps with longer distance or shorter distances. Um, I don't wear anything for swimming. Um, I do have one that helps for kick sets, um, just to kind of offset my, um, my right leg, which is my sound leg. Um, and then I have one for cycling and one for lifting. And then my everyday one that I just wear for walking around. Um, but yeah, during, um, like any modifications I have to make, for equipment, it's normally just I have a fashion, a prosthetic around it. Um, so my bike doesn't have any modifications on it. I just make um, a biking prosthetic that has the cleat right onto the bottom of the foot that connects right into the pedal. So there's less disconnects between my brain and the pedal. Um, and running, I just wear a running blade. Um, but yeah, as far as like different adaptations during training, um, being a below the knee amputee, I have a offset with balance and cadence. And so running, I can't run as long of distance um, without kind of breaking down with um, hip fatigue and back fatigue and everything, um, just because that off balance of the asymmetrical um, running cadence and everything. But for the most part, I pretty much do everything like an able-bodied person would do. Um, just have to be careful with some things um, and different I guess most of the adaptations would come with strength training, um, just being a little bit better, like, as you know, with um, trying to work with the balance and offsetting and um, working on strengthening our amputation side, um, as well as our sound side, just to keep that balance and everything that we're doing. Yeah, no, that's, it, it is really interesting. And 
obviously been doing triathlon for a while now and I'm still learning this year about the different imbalances especially swimming I've kind of got on with it it's I've done it for so long but um definitely in running the uh, the upper body for me this year I've noticed mm-hmm. it a lot we've done a bit of video work and I can see it um which I yeah. guess look, probably people see us just running and they don't realize quite the mechanics that have gone on behind it um which actually brings me to could you tell people just how fast you are running we know that you got a bronze for the 400 meters in Rio as well as the gold can you let people know that with one leg, just how fast you can run off a bike and how, how fast you can do 400 meters? I don't think they realize how fast you are. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so along with my triathlon career, I've also had a pretty good track career as well. Um, I ran division two in college um, where I ran pretty much specifically the mile and the three K. Um, so in the mile, I was just shy. And this was like a true mile, just shy of breaking five minutes. Um, I was around five Oh six. Um, for a 3k, I was right around 10, 15 on a flat 200 meter track. Um, and then 5k is just right around 18 flat currently. Um, so yeah, it's been, and, and for the 400 meter, I was right around 101. Um, couldn't break that one barrier yet. (laughs) Probably won't ever now that I'm kind of putting those days behind me a little bit to focus more on triathlon, but um, yeah, running has definitely been my love from the very beginning and my first, um, my first sport. So it's, it's been, it's been fun to see that progress and progress farther post-college as well. Well, I know that I have to race you and that, um, you know, ah, and I can imagine some people that are watching this are probably thinking, damn, she's really, really fast. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, Thank you. that's an awesome thing. Um, okay. So my next part is you have qualified as a nurse. Yes. Yes. Yes, I am. That is absolutely fantastic. And you've managed to do all of this alongside, well, we've had an extension for the last four years, obviously, since the last games. Please tell us how you've managed to manage your time, how you managed to fit in, I guess, all of that academic work, all of the exams, um, and I guess what you want to do with that in the future. Yeah, no, um, it, it has been a crazy four years. I remember it was post Rio, you were just finishing up your psychology. Um, what was it? Your your master's or. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember you had, you had turned in or about to turn in this massive paper. Um, it was just a, and then I was about to start my, uh, nursing degree and it was, it was a crazy four years. Um, especially with, we had to go to all these races and world championships were right in the beginning of the semester. And, um, I, had to just sit down with my professors at the beginning of the year and say, look, like this is a big part of my life. Um, I will work really hard to be a student um, and like student will come first, but during these few weeks, like I need to focus on triathlon. Um, And it was hard. I was also running for college as well. So trying to fit in nursing triathlon and running um, and then maybe a little bit of a social life in there. Um, But pretty much I just, I would write out my day to the hour of what I was going to do. Um, with class and um, homework and practice and everything um, and eating, putting that in there, nap time and and then getting to bed. Um, sometimes that meant I just turned off the computer and went to bed without finishing homework. Um, but I did want to make sure that I put 100% into my nursing degree because that is something I'm very passionate about. Um, and so going forward with my my original plan was to, um, graduate. I graduated in the spring and I was going to, um, to compete in the games and then become a nurse. Uh, but with COVID, everything kind of got pushed back a little bit. Um, but now the current plan is, you know, as long as games go on as scheduled, um, this year, hopefully is just to, um, pick up a nursing job following the games, um, maybe part-time for a little bit. Um, my interests are in psychiatric nursing, as well as ER nursing. Um, and so still training uh, and nursing, uh, they kind of go well together because even a full-time nursing position is only um, three days a week. Yeah. And so hopefully with part-time, it'll be a little more um, sustainable with training. But I, I do love giving back to others. And um, like triathlon can be, you know, a, a selfish sport. We have to be very courteous of like taking care of ourselves, And that might mean just taking a nap whenever, you know, we want to be giving back. But, um, so for me, there, there is ways in triathlon to give back a lot. 
Um, but I am very excited to kind of start that career as a nurse um, in the next few years. I mean, that's just, that's outstanding. Like there are lots of people that just, they dream of being a Paralympic champion or, or, or fighting to retain the title. And then you've gone and uh, triumphed over everything and got the degree as well. Um, yeah, I salute you. I'm, I feel proud to say that I race against you. It's amazing. Um, oh, thank you. You sort of briefly mentioned in there, if anyone's listening and obviously they've, they've your note from that for time management and fitting everything in, because um, triathlon is, it's very time, um, what would you say, time demanding, because obviously you're yes. trying to do three sports, it's not just one. Um, so I guess yours is, and I was pretty similar actually, is scheduling your day uh, down to the finest mm-hmm. tee. Um, but what would you say is your biggest relaxing and switching off like are you uh you said piano is that something that you you do to switch off I think the one thing that COVID has well it's definitely taught me this year but everyone else is that we can keep training 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 and some people have had more time to train because they've not worked or university has stopped do you find it difficult to get a balance between all the training and actually um I guess the switching off someone said to me the other day um everyone can train really hard but perhaps it's the elite and the best athletes. The reason they're so good is because they know how to rest. They know how to recuperate. Can you share with us a bit of your, um, I guess, downtime and, and how you recover? Yeah, it, it is difficult for me sometimes because, you know, when you think of an athlete in the elite, you always think of like all of their workouts and everything they do. But something I've really come to notice and just like cherish is those like recovery times, you know, like it's just, it's so great to, um, to just like lay down and just take a moment and breathe and just like, okay, I don't have to do anything. Like, like you said, like you finished your workouts for today. It's an amazing feeling. Um, I, part of my recovery team is just uh, in between workouts or after workouts, I love to take naps. I'm a big nap person. Um, it just helps me like turn off. And even if I don't fully sleep, I'll like watch a show or just, um, kind of just kind of, I don't know, vibe out, listen to music, just relax. Um, I also love baking. I know we had a, we shared a lot of recipes during quarantine and it was just so fun. I love like expressing myself through that. Um, that's also with piano. I'm able to express myself in a different way than how we express ourselves in sport. Um, sport can be a little more aggressive getting out that and, um, but other things such as baking and music really helped me express myself more on that creative softer side. Um, that just really helped me turn off and rest and relax and get ready for the, either the next session or the next day. Yeah. I remember our baking over the summer. My dad was very upset that they were all so healthy. Um, <laughs> I need some naughtiness. And I was like, I'm sorry, me and Grace are baking healthy stuff. Um, <laughs> he, wasn't, he wasn't the happiest. Um, oh. it, kind of coming to the final um, questions now. What, I think I do know which probably your, your, your favorite or I guess um, your fondest triathlon memory is. But do you have, um, I guess, the fondest triathlon memory and I guess your toughest uh, memory or moment in your career so far? Yeah, um, starting with, probably the toughest was, um, about, I I guess it was almost a year and a half ago at the Tokyo test event. Um, that was very tough for me. It was tough for a lot of athletes. We, you know, we were there ready to race the course, um, morning of it got changed to a duathlon. Um, me, I think you, we hadn't raced a duathlon before. And so kind of being thrown into that new scenario with all of us, just like, okay, um, and it was really hot and humid and I, I wasn't quite prepared for that temperature wise. Um, I have, I pride myself in saying like, I have, you know, never given up like fully and quit a race and I've always crossed the finish line. Um, that race was so, so difficult for me because I, I wasn't in a good standing. Um, I wasn't, I didn't feel good. I, you know, I had your coaches were cheering for me. I had my coaches cheering for me and I was about, I was, you know, I was walking. It was just not a good day. Um, but you know, through each hard race, we always learn something. Um, to me, it was, even though the outcome wasn't what I had planned or wanted, I still finished that race with, um, learning enough to come back two weeks later and perform well at worlds. Um, going into the fondest memory was probably winning in Rio. Um, 
It was just an incredible race. Um, you can attest to the the crowds, the people that were just, it was just an unreal situation, like atmosphere. I, I don't, I think probably a closest one to that was um, Switzerland this past year in uh, for Worlds. There was a lot of people lining the sidelines. Um, to me, that is just the true atmosphere and the love of triathlon that helps all athletes across the board just perform their best when people are coming behind you and you feel that spirit. Um, so I definitely felt that in Brazil and it was just a really fun course and just the atmosphere of the Paralympics. Um, it's, that's kind of hard to beat, uh, no matter what the outcome is, just being surrounded by that many people representing your country on the largest stage. Um, so that was definitely just an incredible time in my life. So oh, thank you for sharing it with us. And this will be your second games. Yes. Yes. Second games. And I can tell you after three games that each games is so different and each is just as special as the last one. So all those, all those amazing things you remember, they will be there again. Um, and my final question is for any triathlete or para triathlete or wannabe triathlete, para triathlete, what's your, what's Grace Norman's top tip? What would you say to anybody that just wants to be you? Uh, I would say my top tip is just like, don't set limits for yourself because it's very easy to put a top on your dreams and just say, no, I've reached it. Um, a lot of people can say like, oh, I, you know, I went to one Paralympic games. I went to one Olympic games. That's it for me. I'm, I'm done. Um, but I, what I like to tell people is, and I use for myself is just set goals that are way outside what you think you can hit. And then just go for them every single day and better yourself every single day and just see what happens. There's no harm in that. And most of the time you'll surprise yourself. No, well, thank you, Grace. Um, and thank you for coming on and chatting to us. Well, thanks so much. I think this is an awesome platform. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks, Grace.